RadioInfluence.com. This is the Cannabis Podcast on Radio Influence. It's an inside look and the scientific facts in and around the world of medical cannabis. Now, here is your host, Ian Beckles. Hello, everybody. This is Ian Beckles, and welcome back to the Cannabis Podcast. And uh, I've been doing this podcast for a few years now, and it went from a podcast kind of turned into a webcast. And uh, that's why we can do things like we're going to do today. I've talked about bringing in special guests, and this young man uh, I was exposed to at uh, 1025 The Bow when I was there for a couple of years. Uh, Mr. Steve Moonshine Miller, how are you, brother? I'm doing great. It's great to see you, man. First of all, uh, yes, I don't sir. know if I like being referred to as being exposed to. Well, that the, sounds like COVID <laughs> or herpes, man. Like, no, no, I'm not no. Sure. Let's not do that. Let's <laughs> let's not do that. Well, M- Mr. Miller here is a, a comedian. He's been on the radio. Um, you do a whole lot of things, and your name came uh, came across. We were, we were doing this. We're actually doing an event on 710 with Creative Loafing. Absolutely. And they were talking about you actually writing for Creative Loafing about cannabis. Now, when is that all starting? So I'm super excited. The, for my first deadline is actually Friday. Nice. So the first column is going to drop next week. Okay. So it's a column dedicated to nothing but cannabis. So we're talking about cannabis news, telling the reality about cannabis, cannabis as a medicine, and cannabis as politics as well, right? Wow, like, yeah. All these people are starting to get out of jail for these long, long sentences. Correct for a substance that probably that never should have been illegal in the first place. So the world of cannabis is huge from arts and culture, yep. you know, music and everything. So we're going to cover it all. That's that's exciting. That's what I'm trying to do with this pod, podcast and webcast. And by the way, uh, we're powered by Cure Leaf, uh, which is my favorite dispensary. Ho- hopefully you've been to Cure Leaf before. I'm going to tell you, I am so excited to talk about Cure Leaf because I just went there for the first time really? recently. Like, So I just got my medical card. A couple months ago. Good for you. Yeah, very excited about it. Like a lot of people, I started smoking way too young. I okay. started experimenting with cannabis at 15. Okay. And then I stopped for a while. Okay. And because it wasn't really working for me. Then mm-hmm. I realized I was doing it all wrong. Sure. Like not everything has to be a blunt in a car with Understandable, friends. Understandable, yeah. Until it's all gone. Absolutely. And then I'm wondering, <laughs> why isn't cannabis working for <laughs> right? me? It's like, I drank a whole bottle of Jaeger. I guess alcohol doesn't yeah, work right? for me. It's like, yeah, no, yeah. you did too much. So. The only dispensary I've been to so far in Tampa is Curly. Mm-hmm. I haven't gone to a different one because my experiences there have been so good. Understandable. Yeah. See, my, mine was the other way around. I, I, I'm not going to bring up other names, but I went to another a dispensary for the first few times and I went to a couple others. And then everybody kept on telling me, Curly, Curly, Curly. So I finally went and I just understood. So you don't know the difference because you've only no. been there. It's just way more inviting, way yeah. more relaxing. The people are real chill. Um, and to me, it's by far the best. The other one's a little bit more sterile to me. You know what I mean? I'm right. really easy. I'm trying to be an easygoing guy. You sure, know what I'm of course. You know talking what I'm about cannabis, right? To talking about cannabis. Yeah. You know how how tight and you know hemmed <laughs> up can you be when you're when you're talking about? Well, I go cannabis. all the way up, but that's only because I don't that's have a chest good. exposed. Well, that's your look. I've been listening on my pecs. We all got to look. <laughs> now you say you were exposed to uh, cannabis at 15. Yeah. I didn't start smoking until I was 35. Oh, yeah. you're late bloomer. Yeah, I was very late. I'm catching up though. Yeah. I'm making up for some lost time. Uh, being having played football, we got drug tested a lot. Oh, there, right. it's a lot different now. In the NFL, they're actually allowing them to do it now, which they should have ages yeah. ago, ages ago. And uh, they're trying to finally trying to ease up on that a little bit. But so you just got your medical marijuana yeah, card. Man. Now you're the, you're the best person to, to talk uh, to about this. Uh, first of all, if anybody wants to get their card, we're gonna have a bus outside here at Dignitary Cafe uh, the 28th of this month. Go to drcannabus.com. That's Dr. C A N N A B U S.com. We're going to be right outside here on the 28th. Just to be out here for a few days. And you can make your appointment and get your medical marijuana card the 28th through the 30th. Use the promo code Dignitary and you get a discount. Now, you're the per- first person to talk to about this because I got a bunch of other buddies and I have this discussion every single day. Do you, ha- I ha- do you have your medical marijuana card? Oh, I've been getting I've been getting weed my way for years. <laughs> I don't need none of that. I'm like, well, okay. We'll talk to somebody who has their card now. As somebody who's just exposed to a new card, tell me the difference. It's night and day, man. Thank you. It is night and day. The quality of the product mm. is is it's not even comparable. Sure, I had I could find great weed. Sure, without a doubt, yep. everybody can. You know. But you can't always trust that it's what they say it's going to be. Sure. You can't always trust that it is that it is what they say it is. You know, and so for me, my I got my medical card 
Um, cause I, I have anxiety issues. Okay. I get like panic attacks. Sure. So I was very focused on what I wanted to do with cannabis, okay. you know, so I was able to go in and be walked through the process, shown all these different options. Yeah. You can show up to, you know, to a non-reputable source. You can show up to your dealer yeah. and they may have a drawer full of a bunch of yeah, stuff. Right. But you don't know if you can trust it or not. You don't know if it's really Northern lights. Fact. You don't know exactly what it is, but I, through this process, I was guided. And every time that I, that I use cannabis now, it is. Well, look, it's it's to enjoy it as well and to sure. make my life a little better. Sure. It always does the intended effect. Yeah. You know, like at night after, like I've never been, a lot of people are like, I'm gonna have a glass of scotch after a long yeah. time. I always have five glasses of scotch after a long time. So, so I dial that back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with cannabis, it's, it's you know, I, I can really regulate my dosage. Sure. I know exactly what I'm getting and the process was seamless and there was a lot of chatter even before i got my car I was like mm. oh it's so more it's so much more expensive it's you know Please. you know and it's not so much cheaper it's not, I, think. I think it's so much cheaper i go to cure leaf yeah. and it's bogo what always no, so i'm gonna buy like, i never got bogo from a dealer ever in <laughs> my life man never never a single time that's true, that's but true. Then, you know you walk in and it's like okay what are our specials say they're right mm. up front this is what's happening that's it yeah you know? well i go to cure leaf probably once a week okay maybe maybe two and every time i walk in hey Ian, how you doing good good what's special first question some days it's 35 percent off some days buy two get two free yeah so the other day it was buy a third uh uh three eights and get a, a three eight three <laughs> and it's like they're giving away marijuana yes it's crazy yes and you're right about your dealer on the street he ain't gonna give you no 10 percent discount or nothing he's the only one that gets a discount because you got to smoke with him sometimes that's probably about <laughs> right yeah but you're right about this with marijuana and how it's changed throughout the years it used to be a fat sack of marijuana and like you know stems and all that kind of stuff now yeah. when you buy it from your dealer there's stems and stuff in that when you buy it from the dispensary it's cleaned up perfect yes. and it's it's science to i mean to the one one thousandth of a decimal point yeah. okay so i don't know why anybody wouldn't do that at this point it's the safe and legal way to do it exactly as well. and look i love craft beer mm -hmm. you know but if you make craft beer in your bathtub yeah, at home, yeah. I'm not interested. That's understandable. I'm cool with That's it. Understandable. Like, I'm fine. I'll yeah. go ahead and drink this Cigar Although City. Although a lot of craft beer started off there. No, it does. You look, I'm not going to knock it. I brewed some bad beer in my day as sure, well. Sure, yeah, yeah. You know, I'll try it or whatever, mm. but it's not the same thing. Sure. You know, and that's the that's to me is the equation I always come back to. Yep. You know. So you say you're doing it for anxiety. Yep. If you ask me why I'm smoking marijuana, my answer is usually because I like to smoke marijuana. That's a great answer. I also need you know? marijuana to get high. I've been told this as well. Correct, yes. <laughs> and listen, I heard uh, through the grapevine that Queen Elizabeth used to take, used to smoke marijuana for her menstrual craps. Oh, are you serious? Whatever. Yeah, okay. whatever, like said, whatever reason you need. Everybody has a reason why they're smoking marijuana, but the thing is, they're all smoking marijuana. So you said it's more of a process now. So anxiety, is it something that you're microdosing through the day? To stop the anxiety attacks, do you take a little bit more at night to help you sleep? How do you, how do you That's do That's exactly what I do, man. Yeah. I'm throughout the day maintaining. I, I, my go-to is, is the vape. Yeah. You know, I love hitting the vape. I got a nice indica that I put in there. Yeah, I got one in my and pocket just, right yeah, now. Yeah, just go through the day like yeah, that a little absolutely. bit at a time. And uh, and then, you know, on the weekends or before bed, maybe yeah. we're taking a couple, you know, maybe rub the course. doses to help us sleep. Of course. You know, and if I don't, like... And if I'm going to be doing something creative, uh, I like to get into some edibles. Something okay. creative or some fun, I'll get into some yeah. edibles. Well, that was my next question. Have you dabbled in the edibles? Oh, yeah. A lot of people uh, are scared of the edibles. Uh, for just, I mean, I understand. Because you can't really smoke yourself stupid, but you can eat yourself oh, stupid. Yeah. Real quick. Stupid. Real quick. And I've done yeah. it. So I've done it. So, I've, so I've, I've never done it from a dispensary. <laughs> yeah, though. you know what I mean. I've never done it from a regulator. You know what's standpoint. funny? Neither have I. Yeah, like, I've done it when I got stuff off the street. Exactly. Like you don't know what's going to be no. in there. You know, just some hippie at Skipper Smokehouse grew up a batch of brownies. Yes. And I figure I better have two because sure. obviously I like brownies. Yeah. By the way, we got to talk about these seats because this angle, <laughs> camera guys, we got to do something about this angle. This isn't helping anybody. So you know I got a problem with the brownies. Ian, well, come on, man. Well, You're not a thin guy. Anyways. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't worry about anybody looking too thin in this in this uh, shot right here. So. <laughs> no, but like I, the last time I made edibles on my own, yeah. I, I I brewed up some brownies, so I made the can of butter out of it, yeah. made the brownies out of it, mm. and then I did the classic dummy move, right? I took the one, yeah. and I was like, all right, I did, wait words. two hours, man, just yeah. wait the two hours. Famous didn't. last words, yeah. Didn't. An hour in, I'm like, oh, I must have messed it up. Eat the other one. 
and life was so good for like 20, 25 minutes. Man. Yeah, but then, then it I, went straight downhill. Wow, so quickly. Downhill. Nothing made sense. I couldn't understand yeah. anything. I, do you remember that old 911 call, 911 call from the cop? Like he oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I think oh, I'm, I'm dead. I'm dead. I, I, yeah, you're dying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got there a couple of times, and I've, I've told these stories before. And also, a buddy of mine, before the dispensaries and all those was a few years ago, he said, uh, I need some weed. I want to make some brownies. So I gave him like a quarter ounce of my top-notch weed that I was spending a lot of money for. Right. And I happened to have like a year's worth of Keith on the bottom Ooh. of my grinder. A year. <laughs> like I opened it. He's like, whoa. Well, we put all these. He put all them in one batch of brownies. And I had a football game that Sunday. And everybody came to my house to watch the game. And it was like the Night of the Living Dead. Really? It was bad. Yeah. It was bad. <laughs> like, I don't know how many people called me on the way home, stopped and pulled off on the street. Right. Like, I people, can't do it. They couldn't do can't it. do it, You man. know what I mean? And I was fine. And everybody else was tripping out. So, like I said, yeah, I've, it's funny you say that. I never really realized that. But the two situations that I had with edibles were with the ones off the street and not from yeah. the dispensary. I mean, how am I going to figure out how many milligrams of THC is in the butter I just made yeah. while I was half drunk on PBR in my kitchen? It's a, it's a good not, I can't do it, man. I can't do it. Yeah, well, my buddy used to give me the edibles. But I used to tell him that batch was stronger. That batch wasn't as strong. Right. So I should tell you right there yeah. how much it varies. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Seriously, but that's... And listen, I'm, I'm getting into edibles or... I can't do daytime edibles. No. Nighttime edibles. Yeah. Because, you know, we speak for a living. Yes. And you don't want to be a babbling idiot. Oh, I can't. And like, I can't remember anything with yeah. edibles. If I, like, I think if I took an edible and had to go on stage and perform, yeah. I, I'd probably just have to cancel the show, man. I don't think I could do it. Nah, I don't think I could do it. I don't know. I know. I love I love comedy, uh, as, as you do. Um, do you smoke before you go up on stage? I'll take a little before I go on yeah, stage. Sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, here. Yeah, but I don't want to be. I don't like to get high. Yeah, I like to just get a little mellow, get a little stoned. Yeah. You know, just forget about everything. Be able See, to I live in the high. moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you get high on air like broadcasting? Uh, I have been. I don't anymore. Yeah, I have. You know, way back in the day when it was a Ron and Ian show. You know, way way back in. You know, Ron went through some times where he was drinking and, you know, not on air, but, no, right. you know, we were just different, younger people, sure. you know, I would get there blasted and, you know, I didn't have as many responsibilities. Now it's the Beckles and Retro show. Yeah. When your name is first, there's a lot more responsibilities. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot sure. more reads and you got to know this and the timing in and out. And if you're blasted, that ain't going to work. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't get blasted that much anymore. Like, I just, you know, take a couple hits during the day. Yeah. It just kind of takes the edge off. That's it. And at nighttime, then I'll get over to a certain point where I'm just going to, you know, be asleep. Right. When the night, when the, when, when my Correct. work is done, when everything is done, yes. and I don't have any more responsibilities, yeah. and I can put on some music and just realize that I never heard that horn before. Yeah, right. You know, like, then it's time to go. That's funny. If I finally you turn yourself into my boy from my Half-Baked. You ever listen to that on weed? On weed? No, yeah. but that's real though. It absolutely. And when I started, <laughs> and when I got my my uh, my card, and I started regularly using cannabis yeah. again, and because it had been a little bit of time, I was like, my God, music is so good. Music is so yeah. good. It's funny you say horns. You're like, what was that sound in the back? Yeah. Like I never heard that yep. before. Or you're eating. You're like, what's that taste? Oh. Like I like everything it, it to, gets a little everything. better with cannabis, everything. man. Like oh. I don't know. Last time I went to a restaurant without getting high on the way there. Why? Why would you go to a restaurant oh. and eat a beautiful meal exactly and not be high? Yeah, you want to like if if you're training for a, for a marathon, you train. Correct. Right? You get your body right you your, for the event. Right. Yeah, We're just cool. getting our body right for the event. <laughs> that's all. I'm not walking into Ruth Chris stone sober, man. <laughs> I need to be ready for this experience. That Those chefs true. put a lot of work into it. That Ian. is true. And who am I to and, take away? And this is real talk, everybody. And listen to me closely. Whoever made that movie, or whoever made that food, or whatever you're about to indulge in, was high. Okay. Yeah. So, I, I can't, who I can't, who was doing an interview one time? Somebody said, "Who's the last person to ever create something without drugs?" And the other guy looked. He goes, "I don't think it's ever happened." I think that's correct. Like, who, what musician yeah. didn't do drugs? Imagine exactly. Imagine you Jimi know? Hendrix without psychedelics. And you know the, so boring. You know the <laughs> one artist everybody said didn't do drugs. Who was? It was Prince. Yeah, and then he died at but, but overdose, right? Right. Yeah. You know who stone sober? Ted Nugent. I don't like Ted Nugent, so I'm totally at peace. No, with I don't anybody like Ted Nugent. Yeah, I don't, not a big, not a, not a, he no. looks. He needs to smoke. He, he does. Needs he should have. Oh, he should have. Absolutely should. Less time killing deers, more time getting high. No doubt. Everything no will doubt. be all right. So, so have you messed with 
the tinctures and stuff and stuff like that. Tinctures yeah. I haven't gotten into yet. I'll tell you what I'm interested in is the shatter and the dabs. That, okay. That's another place I haven't gone you haven't to been yet. yet. No, okay. no, because I know the whole event coming up at Pepin. Yeah, that's after oil, right? So it's seven ten. Correct. So correct. we're flipping it. Well, yeah, that's seven ten upside down. Says oil. Okay? Yeah, and so it's like a four twenty number right. in, in in the weed world. But we just it just happened to be open. I go seven ten and look, let's look and see if this is open at Pepin, and it was open. And that's here right there. This is this is the event right here. It's gonna be Tampa Bay Canna Fest. And sponsored by a dignitary and creative loafing. You go to TampaBayCannafest.com to get your tickets, and I guess you get some uh, some discounts if you get if you get there That's early. Really fun, man. But uh, you know, there's gonna be some cool vendors there. Um, I went to an event over there in Sarasota. It was uh, SRQ 420, and there was an outdoor thing. Ours gonna be maybe a little classier. But these cannabis fests have been done throughout the country, everywhere. Yeah, just to bring like-minded people in there. Now, are you going to be? Are you able time. to indulge in that environment? No, no, no. Well, you know, there's no way you can really do that. You know what I mean? Right. Not really. You can't say, "Hey, guys, come on in." Now, I'm going to say this: at the Sarasota Fest, everybody's walking around smoking. Yeah, it's everybody. outdoors, right? So you can sort of anything get away outdoors. But I can see yeah. everybody's walking outside. I can see the smoke wafting outside at the Pepin Hospitality. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. And uh, uh, for those of you who don't have your, your medical marijuana card, you can just get your card right there in the Dr. Cannabis. So Perfect. you get yourself uh, ready to rock. So you haven't really messed with the tinctures much. You like the edibles. Yeah, I've been um, all edibles and vape. I like to get some flour. I like, because I still like smoking a joint. I, I still so, like yeah. sitting down, that's you know, it. put yeah, on some music. It's an experience. Just it's an experience. Exactly. You know what I mean? Because that takes me back. Correct. Like to, because the first time I ever bought weed when I was 15, it was me and my other, me and my buddy. Mm -hmm. So we're both 15. We don't know what to do. We don't know what's going on. We didn't have any rolling papers. Uh, the guy that sold it to us didn't give us anything to smoke out of. So we're just trying to roll it up in napkins. Oh, so jeez. Ian, it took me a long time yeah, to get high did. when yeah, I was 15. Did. I didn't know what yeah, I was doing. And napkins. It's napkins, man. Oh, so of course it didn't work. That's you ghetto I mean? as hell. Oh, it's the worst. That's a terrible bird. I can it's see it right worst. now. It's real yeah, bad. Yeah, nobody wins with that. Uh, and you, and that, the whole sh shatter and the crumble thing. I'm not crazy versed on it, although uh, uh, I have an apparatus, the uh, Turp Pen XL. Ooh. It's real easy. You just pull the top off. And you take the shatter, put it at the end, and just hit it, and, it, and it's, it's a real good high, actually. Yeah, that, that, actually, that, a little later, I may let you indulge a little bit. Yeah, I would like you, that. You know what I mean? I like that very much. Yeah, I, no I think it's going to be important to prepare my mind for Canifest. That's what I'm saying. And no. for the meal that I'm going to have later. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's, it's right, <laughs> right around the corner. Now, have you ever indulged with cooking with cannabis yet? Yeah, man. Okay. Like, that's what I was saying. Well, not, not since I've had my car. Okay. You know, but the one thing that I saw that had a cure leaf that I was interested in is that, that drink additive. Have yeah, you seen that yeah. squirt or whatever? Yeah, but I'm going to say this. It's cool. It's just not a lot. There's no. not a lot of milligrams of it. You know what uh, I mean? Well then. Like you like you, you squirt one thing and it's five milligrams. Yeah. That's it's not like, really my world. Yeah, we're not getting there. No, five milligrams is you got to, yeah. you know, my milligrams don't start at five. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like that, I walk in there and go. We got to put a zero at the end of yeah, that five. Yeah, <laughs> uh, You know, when I go to Cure Leaf, they'll say, uh, do you want the five milligrams or 10 milligram uh, uh, gummies? I go, right. come on. Ow, come come on. on. You know. That's like when you go to a restaurant, you want the six ounce or the eight ounce. I will slap you. <laughs> You'll give me a six ounce. Hey, hey, give me two of the six shame, ounces. Shame eight and eight ounces. You, you know what I mean? No <laughs> doubt. But yeah, I'm starting to get dab a little bit in some of the tinctures and at Cure Leaf, they do other stuff you put in the waters and stuff like that. And you know, that's that's daytime stuff mostly for a lot of people. And that's not really me though. You know, I, right. like I said, like the tinctures at night sometimes will put some of my water just to ease it down. If I'm not drinking as much, which I'm going, I just started today a 30, 30 day cleaning, cleansing. Oh, wow. So I'm going to cleanse my body out a little bit. Um, what are you doing for that? You got like a specific regimen, like a whole 30 type It's thing, a whole or? 30 day diet as far as what you eat, what you drink. I'm cutting the coffee out. I'm drinking more tea. Uh, here at Dignitary Cafe, we have Kratom tea now. Oh, that's good stuff. So I'm chilling with that yeah, now. Yeah, that's so, nice. So instead of like, it's not in lieu of alcohol, but you still, the Kratom will give you a little buzz, you yeah. know? Like at night tonight, I'll have a little Kratom and uh, smoke a little bit. Kratom tea and herb go together. It's, See, it, this it, I have not done yet. Well, it's... So it's, this I must It's do. really, really, really yeah. nice. Yeah, it just kind of kind of balances it up real nice. Um, a buddy of mine came through here and uh, brought me kilos of Kratom. You know what I mean? I was like, <laughs> hope the cops don't roll up in here. You know what I mean? They literally look like big, you know, sure. blocks of, of cocaine. Yeah, like you're rolling on the beach in Miami. Which I don't Miami. mess with, by the way. I don't mess with cocaine. 
Look, I, you know, hey. It's not good for you. Everybody gets to, to do what they want, Joe. Of course. There's no judgment here. That's what I'm saying. If you were going to bring Ian cocaine and, you didn't, <laughs> and he said no to you, there are other options in the room currently. <laughs> Yeah, I would uh, No, I, look, man, like those days are behind me. No shit. Sure, and, yeah, yeah. and, and I I had fun doing it, but I never woke up and said, geez, I'm glad I did cocaine. I've never heard <laughs> anybody so say, I've never heard somebody go, man, I really missed the days of doing cocaine. No, nobody does. Like, nobody, no, I heard Quaaludes. I heard of that. Yeah. Quailu, everybody it's always raised. the downers, right? It's yeah. always stuff that relaxes. It's true. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In this world that we live in, do I need to be on edge with speed? Is that what I need no, to do? Absolutely. Not. I need to get all jacked up and paranoid on speed and then read the news and watch everything burning? No, most, thanks, man. Most of this country, country needs to come down. Yeah. They mostly want me to come That's down it. and just relax. And some of the people that are against marijuana right now, I feel like saying, you're the first culprits that need to smoke a blunt. Exactly. Smoke a blunt and relax yourself. Yeah, and think and about it. And stop worrying about other people's shit. Yes. See, I think the next presidential debate should happen in these chairs. Just If, if you just take those dudes <laughs> in their suits and yeah. sit them down here, sit them right say, here. let's talk. And take them out of the suits. Let's talk. Exactly. Take them out of the suits. Yeah. Some of those people, though, and, you know, we a lot of times when I do this show by myself, uh, I'll talk about the political side of some things, you know, right. you know, you know, the different regulations and there's rules and regulations changing every single day. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, some of these tough suits, you just, you'd like to get them out of the suits. Yeah, sometime, show, you know show me your human side. Yeah. Show me your human side. I yeah. think that's what people liked about Trump is that at least he talked like a normal human being talks. Is that what they liked about Whatever, uh, Well, I'm through that in the racism, but I mean... <laughs> I was still Read looking. the comments, people. Oh. I didn't like the fat guy with the mustache. <laughs> <laughs> that Antifa guy on the Ian Beckle show was a bit too much for me. Uh, yeah, I have uh, a couple other uh, podcasts. I have a, a football podcast, and I have in a, the trenches, a, sure. in the trenches, and, I and, a, and a government one too. Uh, a flavor in your year, and yeah. uh, if you listen to it, you're quite aware that I'm not a huge Donald Trump fan. Oh yes, uh, you yes. know it's yeah. just uh, I don't know what it's some about him, but just you know, mm, I'm not uh, sure. I can't tell if it's the incompetence <laughs> or the ignorance. There's there's one of the two. I can't. And you know what's figure funny? Out. Those are not even high up on the list. <laughs> they're not. But they're on the they're, list. Oh, oh they're what's on num- the what's list. number one with a bullet for you? I just think he represents what's wrong with America to begin with. Dude, that is it. That is it. It's, so you, so yeah, you're, so the you're, value system so is your all wrong, rich right? daddy gave you all your money, so you right. can fuck off all that money and tell everybody you're a good businessman. Yeah. You know what? You know how much money my parents gave me. Zero. Exactly. Okay, and not only that, when they both passed, you know what they left me? Bills. <laughs> Debt. They said Debt. his daddy, his daddy <laughs> gave him. You know what the, you know the number was? Four hundred and thirty-two million dollars throughout the years. And I could I could have a freaking jet with my name and on the somehow line. he was able to turn that right? into five hundred million. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and he really didn't though. We look no, at how much man. he's owed. But yeah. anyways, we don't want to get too political. We're more about more about smoking, smoking, smoking that thing. So so, which cure leaf do you normally go to? I go. I live in North Tampa. I live way up in North. I live in North of Carolina. So the one of the loots. Uh, yeah, Del exactly. Mabry. Yeah, that's it, man. Yeah, yeah that's a that's good one. spot. I haven't, yeah. I haven't been in it. I've been I've been driven by it, and uh, like the cure leaves are all over the place. The one over here is the one I go to on Gandhi. And uh, if you live here in the Bay Area, there's one near you. They're everywhere. You man. Just Google it and. But there's, there's, there's dispensaries everywhere. I love it. They're just everywhere. I love it, man. Like I, like I always felt like even when I was younger and, and using cannabis, you know, at, at that age, mm. and I was like, this has got to be legal at some point. It has like to. at a certain point, sure. you know, and it took a while. It took 30 years yeah. until Florida got it at least. And, you know, and I'm sure recreational is going to be on the heels of it sooner than later. When do you think? Like I've asked some people, some people were like, some people last year were saying this year, and I'm like, eh, I don't know. Yeah. A couple of years, maybe? It'll take a couple of years. Yeah. I think, like, like you know, you look at places like case studies like Colorado, they're making so much tax money off it. There's no so issues involved with it whatsoever. Yeah. And then you have cannabis tourism that goes along with it. It is a complete miss for Florida not to be recreational because before everybody else does, too. Because there's still some tourism involved with it. Like, people sure. will go to Seattle or they'll go to Colorado because I'm choosing where I want to go on my vacation. I want to go somewhere where cannabis of is legal. Of course they do. And, but everybody wants to go to Florida anyway, so you Correct. put those two things together, man. So I would hope that even even people that may be morally opposed to it, you could talk to them about the dollars and cents of it, too. You're just leaving money on the table. Correct. Hey, let's not raise property taxes. Let's not have more sales tax. Let's just have a cannabis tax. And we hit, you know, we double it up with a tourist cannabis tax. Why not? Because F them. And morally opposed anymore? I don't know anymore. Like, if somebody's morally opposed. Do you think anybody really is? No. Right? No. Like, they're just pretending it's just to be politics. morally opposed. It's just politics. Yeah. It has to be. Okay, if I say you're morally opposed, then back it up with something. Yeah. 
We, there's nothing else to come with Because it. if you're going to tell me you're morally opposed, but you're okay with alcohol, Correct. you're way off. That's what I'm saying. But if you're like, none of it, I don't want to hang out with you. But but at least I can respect the consistency. Sure. But I don't want to hang out with sure. you. Sure. But the, the numbers are there. The numbers are there. It's just bringing money to our communities. Uh, you know, the domestic abuse goes down. Yep. Alcoholism goes down. Yep. Drunk you know, driving accidents, drunk driving down. injuries, all that stuff goes down. It's man. amazing. Yeah. So, but uh, Steve Moonshine Miller, uh, uh, once again, I, I met you way back when on the on the boat. Yeah, we cool, did a couple shows dude. together. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so you social media guy? I am absolutely Steve Miller eight one three on everything. Steve Miller eight one three. Tampa. If anybody wants to hit me up, I'm mostly Instagram guy. It's Ian underscore Beckles, and uh, Mr. Miller is going to be there on seven ten. Absolutely. Uh, for the Cata Fest, which is going to be at uh, Pepin Distributing. Uh, it's going to be a higher end thing now. I mean, once again, we're not a pretentious bunch, but it's not going to be like that, you know, fest where you're outside and by smoking and it's dusty. So no Birkenstocks? Oh no, there's going to be Birkenstocks. <laughs> People are going to be smelling like patchouli, all that kind of stuff like that. I'm going to probably bring some incense in there to burn. Sure, okay? you got to. Because I have incense burning in here all the time. It makes me feel at ease. Um, it's going to be a real easygoing uh, atmosphere. I'm going to do some of the DJing myself. Nice. Uh, Pulling off all, all, all on the side all my uh, marijuana songs. There you, go. you know what I mean. Starting with Rick James, a little, <laughs> little Mary Jane, and go down from there. But um, but yeah, it's gonna be a good time. Though, I'm really. looking forward to Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. So next week is gonna be your first creative loafing. First article. creative loafing column. Perfect. I'm not sure the exact day that's dropping. It'll be on digital first, and then we'll see if it's gonna wind up in print or not. But yeah, I'm really excited. So we're gonna be talking about cannabis. The creative loafing is behind it, and we're gonna be spreading. Cannabis science, cannabis news, and yeah, cannabis man. culture and stories. I love it, bro. Yeah, me too. I know James Howard. I just hung out with him. Uh, he's him and myself put this whole uh, event together. I've known James for a while. Uh, nice dude, man. Absolutely, nice dude. Just, love the people to create. Absolutely, love, just easygoing people. Yeah, and uh, and that's what it's all about. So, Steve Moonshine Miller. Make sure you follow him. And uh, if you're coming to the event uh, on seven ten. He's going to be somewhere. I'm sure he's not going to be too hard to, to find. <laughs> You'll spot Yeah, he's about as hard to find as I am. And if we're together, then it's just going to be a debacle. That's it. Okay. But everybody, I appreciate you listening in. Get out there and smoke something delicious this week. I know I will. Peace out. Be good. For more information on medical cannabis, make sure to follow Ian Beckles on Twitter, at Ian Beckles. This has been the Cannabis Podcast, powered by Leave on Radio Influence. I'm Jerry Petuck, CEO of Radio Influence. I just wanted to take a quick moment to say thank you for downloading and subscribing to this podcast. There are a lot of people behind the scenes here at Radio Influence that work hard to keep you entertained day in and day out. If you'd like to get involved and advertise on this program, or you have some show ideas that you'd like to see us add to the Radio Influence family, please email us at contact at radioinfluence.com. We all have crazy schedules, so the fact that you took time out of your busy day to let us entertain you for a while means a lot. Without you, the listeners, we wouldn't exist. So thank you again for downloading and subscribing to this show. Don't forget to check out RadioInfluence.com to see what other shows we also have to offer. All of Radio Influence's programming can be found on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Google Play, and of course, RadioInfluence.com. 